What up everybody, it's your boy Reggie Casual from the casual.co and it's the end of the year. And as always, we're handing out rankings and today we're getting right into it with the best collabs of 2017. Per usual, The Casual is handing out a lot of these to unsung heroes, but we won't dismiss the collabs that created seismic shifts in the game. And for the purposes of this list, we are only allowing two clothing labels, so no Akira Supreme on this guy. And also, sneaker-only collabs need not apply, so they won't be on here either. So, without further ado, these are The Casual's top 10 collabs of 2017. Number 10, Pigar and Nike. Pigar is Relatively quiet for the most part, but when word of a collab with Nike surfaced, fans waited in angst. They were met with a sleek, pastel, futuristic take on sportswear with both men's and women's offerings. While the decision to design in this fashion split the fan base in two, Pigado's take on sportswear was absolutely refreshing and welcome. As brands keep veering in the direction of a fantastical, Pigado took a more subdued approach and executed it well. Number nine, Kith and Non-Native. Now, Kith has been doing it all year in the Black Friday release in collaboration with Japanese-run Non-Native was certainly a departure from the norm for the brand. Taking on vintage camo and military themes, Kith explored how it can easily go from lifestyle to lifestyle without losing touch or even a hitch. The cuts and oversized styling was a nice urban touch and the Black Friday release kept the collection super exclusive. Number eight, Fanny Puma. You didn't see that coming. Let's be real here. Women's street fashion is often overlooked, and many would be strictly women's street fashion labels that mirror the men's offerings are often slim pickings, leaving ladies to do what they do best adapt and create. That is until Baby Riri's Finny Puma lineup that takes women's lifestyle across time, mixing some Ivy League motifs with some classic urban silhouettes while keeping it sexy. The collection has Riri written all over it, which is an awesome sentence. If women's street fashion is headed in this direction, we should all approve, as men and women alike. Number seven, Kith et Montclair. <laughs> in a year where winter collections nearly outshined their spring-summer counterparts, the Kith Montclair collaboration stood out as a testament of how a street brand like Kith can easily mesh itself with high-end function brands like Montclair. While the over-branding was a bit much for some, the puffer jackets, boots, and a slight little dash of ASICs were enough to make the collaboration a standout in the West in a major way. Number six, Sakai and North Face. This is another one we didn't see coming. If the Kip Montclair collaboration introduced us to the possibility of functional brands and street brands in collaboration, then the Sakai North Face collaboration perfected it. And while some may dismiss this because Sakai is not necessarily a street brand per se, both Sakai and North Face have interjected themselves in street fashion enough to be considered in this category. What we were given is a complete reworking on how fabrics can be combined to create special pieces that are certainly once in a lifetime. This is to be expected. Sakai brand designer Chitose Abe, while lauded in Japan, is often forgotten in the West, which is a shame because we keep getting amazing pieces from her house and we will continue. So keep an eye out for Sakai in the future. Number five, Bape and Double Taps. Yes, Bape actually makes the list this year. It came late. But it came well, which is certainly a strange combination of words, but this is not a strange collaboration. It was natural, it was nearly perfect. Tetsunishiyama's double taps turns Bape's playful motif into a serious vintage camo infused collection. Check and good. Absent of sharks, ape faces outside of the tags, the collection was a stark contrast to the Bape formula and sent a jolt into the brand that often has a problem with coming through with decent collabs, and we all know that to be true. And while the undefeated collab mirrored this in many ways, this collection was obviously more double taps, and that was the right decision. So they must be commended for that. Number four, Supreme Stone Island. Yes, if you are a fan of Supreme, check. Fan of technical wear? Check. The Supreme Stone Island collection exceeded expectations and the fans responded accordingly. We know you were out there. We know it. Now, while the floral down jackets and caps were divisive, the other pieces not so much. Flaunting the Stone Island method, the collection was injected with the brand's polyurethane vibes and add some reflective anoraks, sweats, and shirts, and you have a collab that is one of the most complete of 2017. That and it's basically Stone Island with Supreme branding, so there's that. And, and that's not a bad decision. In fact, that's, that's pretty dope. Applause, I guess. Number three, Mastermind. North Face. That's right. 
We're giving the number three spot to Mastermind and North Face, and that's because this collab is one of the best of 2017, and we should all understand why. Even if you don't like Mastermind Japan, you can't deny that the North Face collaboration is just clean, sweet, and simple. And while haters who always comment on Japanese brands negatively when everyone else loves them will embarrass themselves by projecting, basically, they really love Japanese brands. They just hate that others know about them and they don't feel unique anymore. The Mastermind North Face collab was done with such fanfare, such a minimal aesthetic, such technicality, usage of dry vent fabric, like, okay. That is pretty much fire and functional at the same time. Add in some camo that was a bit of a hit or miss and you have Mastermind still giving us items that pay homage to its illustrious past. Number two, White Mountaineering and Adidas Originals. Now, every year we talk about White Mountaineering and every year they do an Adidas collab and every year we are blessed. We don't know how many times we're gonna have to say it, but this year we went in a more tech direction than years past and that made the collab oh so much sweeter. The very definition of a complete collab, sweaters, track pants, cargos, anoraks, crew necks, tees, and a slew of sneakers, the collab stood out as a subtle entry into the world of tech wear, or maybe like tech leisure. The best thing about it, it was that it had options. Each piece could stand on its own or put together in an entire fit. So while it may not be the flashiest release or even the most notorious, it was the most complete and probably the most well-designed, but it wasn't that coveted. And that's a shame, yet it serves as a benchmark for completion and variety, which is all the people want. This is That's all we want is completion and variety. And that makes us happy. So we are at number one, but let's take a look at the collabs that got us this far. Number 10, we got Pigalle and Nike serving up Pastel Athletics and me butchering the French language. At number nine, Kith and Non-Native go exclusive on Black Friday. Eight. Ladies get their just due with Benny Puma. Seven, Kith and Montclair serve up winter luxury and I serve up more bad French. At number six, Sakai and North Face receive no attention but dish out a technically sound collab. Five, Bape and Double Taps go real camo in a fight for survival. Supreme hands over the keys to Stone Island. At number four, three, Mastermind gives us a chilling North Face collab. And finally at number two, White Mountaineering and Adidas make tech wear approachable with one of the most complete collabs this year. And finally, at number one, with no drum roll. Supreme and Louis Vuitton. Yeah, you knew you knew this was coming, right? I mean, some of you were just waiting for like, yo, if this dude does not say where this brand is, like you were just gonna get upset. But as divisive as this collab was, it certainly created more waves in street fashion than any other in 2017, despite coming out earlier in the year. Let's be clear, it's not the best design collab, but it is the most influential. It basically paved the way for luxury brands to consider working with street fashion brands on a regular basis. And yes, we've seen hints of that very thing in the past, but due to the popularity of Supreme and the sheer amount of buzz, the Supreme Louis Vuitton collab is the number one collab between two brands this year, hands down, because of the hype. This coming from the casual, who doesn't really have one Supreme piece in storage. We don't buy it, but not recognizing it is basically suicide. Again, not even close to the best design wise, but because of the sheer volatility, Supreme and Louis Vuitton, hands down, we all know it to be true. It's it's just a true statement. And the bag is kind of dope. The bag is the bags are pretty cool. You gotta admit the bags actually are pretty dope. So that's our top 10 collabs at the casual, but of course this is a contentious issue and many of you will disagree. And guess what? That's, that's fine because you could either come at it like an adult and debate or two, catch a hissy fit and complain like a child with profanities laced in the comments. Your choice. We just wanna hear from you and your take. In the meantime, give a thumbs up if you like this video and follow us on Instagram for the visuals and Twitter for the info. Help us build by supporting us on Patreon, but most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion and culture from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu and we out. See you guys again. We got more top tens. More, more coming. Kyo wa kokomade desu.